As silver stackers, we learn to be patient and diligent to find those great deals on silver to add weight to our stacks. One such occasion occurred on Black Friday this year when I took advantage of the SD bullion offer of $25 face value of 90% US silver half dollars at spot. Spot at the time was $17.03, so I ended up adding 17.88 ounces to my stack. The Franklin half dollar is classified as constitutional silver with a composition of 90% silver and 10% copper. It weighs 12.5 grams. It has a diameter of 30.61 millimeters, a thickness of 1.8 millimeters. The edges are reeded. It has a silver content of 0.36169 of a troy ounce. It was minted from 1948 to 1963. The obverse displays the left-facing portrait of Benjamin Franklin, an American polymath and one of the founding fathers of the United States. Franklin helped to draft the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. You will also find the inscription Liberty across the top rim and In God We Trust along the bottom as well as the year of mintage. The reverse displays the Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell is an iconic symbol of American independence located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Once placed in the steeple of the Pennsylvania State House, the bell today is located in the Liberty Bell Center in Independence National Historic Park. To the left of the bell is the inscription E Pluribus Unum, which is Latin for Out of Many, One, and is a traditional motto of the United States. To the right of the bell you will find a small eagle, which was actually added as an afterthought when Mint officials realized that the Coinage Act of 1873 requires one to be displayed on all coins of greater value than a dime. Across the top rim are the inscriptions of the country of issue and along the bottom rim the denomination. The Franklin half dollar was struck in relatively small numbers in its first years as there was limited demand due to the glut of walking liberty halves. No half dollars were struck at the Denver Mint in 1955 and 1956 due to a lack of demand. The San Francisco Mint actually closed in 1955 and didn't reopen until 1965. In 1957, with improved economic conditions, demand for the pieces began to rise. Here are the results of my $25 face value purchase of Franklin halves. And here is a chart for the mintage numbers. In regards to the condition of the coins, I estimated that 47 of the coins averaged between very fine and extra fine and would have been valued between eight and nine dollars each. I did have three notable exceptions. A 1952S, which I determined to be extra fine, valued at twelve dollars. A 1949P, I determined to be extra fine, valued at thirteen dollars. And a 1948P, that I estimated to be extra fine, valued at eleven dollars. So the total numismatic estimated value of the 47 coins at $8 would be $376. The three exception coins collectively were valued at $36, giving a grand total of $412. The amount I paid, $304.56, leaves me with a potential numismatic profit of $107.44. That's not bad. I don't purchase constitutional silver for its numismatic value, however, I always check the coins just in case I happen to have a coin of value included in my order. 
Constitutional silver goes by many aliases. Among these are 90% silver and junk silver. But I have noticed that most people refer to it as junk silver, and that wouldn't be wrong, but I'd like to take a moment to explain that there is a difference between junk silver and true constitutional silver. The term junk silver is synonymous with any silver item containing a reasonable percentage of actual silver in its composition, and this would indeed include constitutional silver, and thus the term is being used accurately. But the term constitutional silver refers to a specific category of silver coinage as defined by the U.S. Constitution and thus would be more accurately described as such. A brief look at constitutional history is required to understand the difference. The part of the Constitution we must examine is Article 1, Section 8, which covers a wide variety of congressional powers. In case you're interested, here is a complete list of the congressional powers stipulated in Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution. But in this case, we will focus on only one of those stipulated powers. To coin money, regulate the value thereof, and of foreign coin, and fix the standard of weights and measures. Because this nation was founded as a land of immigrants, each who had their own particular coinage when they arrived, the first 16 years of the nation's existence saw the use of foreign coinage as an exchange for goods and services. It wasn't until the Coinage Act of 1792 that the nation established their own mint and clearly defined what a U.S. dollar is. At that time, the Spanish piece of eight was widely accepted for commerce, and this became the standard that Congress used to create the new U.S. dollar. It was formally defined as follows. Dollars or units each to be the value of a Spanish milled dollar as the same as is now current, and to contain 371 grains and 4 sixteenths part of a grain of pure or 416 grains of standard silver. So the original congressional definition of a constitutional dollar was established as a silver coin containing 371.25 grains of pure silver equivalent to about three-fourths of an ounce. The value of a dollar is constitutionally fixed because it has a known quantity incorporated by reference within the constitutional text. Congress has no power to alter the value of the dollar. Only a congressional amendment can do that. Any silver coinage that complies with the congressional mandated silver content requirements is considered constitutional silver. Here is a list of constitutional coinage. Because of wear, a bag of dimes or quarters will now net about 0.715 ounces of pure silver when melted. There seems to be ample supply of constitutional coinage available in the secondary markets, but it should be noted that since the late 1960s, it is legal to melt U.S. constitutional silver, and this may affect the future availability of this type of coinage. When buying to determine the value of your constitutional silver, here are some calculating notes you can use. These figures will only apply to face value and weights of 90% constitutional silver and does not apply to war nickels or 40% silver halves or dollars. One way to determine if you're getting a good deal is to add up the face value of your constitutional silver and divide it by $1.40. This will provide you with the number of troy ounces contained within the coinage. Take that price and compare it to the current spot price for
for the same number of ounces to determine how much premium the seller has attached to the price. I use the term junk silver to describe any object comprising of two or more elements, one of which is a reasonable amount of silver. This can be foreign coinage, jewelry, tableware, candlesticks, platters, tea sets, silver statues, art pieces, or anything else that's comprised of silver. I consider constitutional silver to be one of the best opportunities to accumulate silver weight at a discount. And there is always the chance that you might pick up a coin with some numismatic value as well. Whenever you can acquire constitutional silver at spot, you've definitely got a win-win scenario. Was this content useful to you? What percentage of your stack is constitutional or junk silver? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who take the time to like, comment, and share. Your efforts really help the channel to grow and it is greatly appreciated. If you are not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. And as always, feel free to share this content with all.